Further to my video, the subject of the love and hatred of God, which was intended to provoke certain questions about the nature of the love of God. Questions that are most reasonable to ask when considering the misconception of modern man who will maintain or claim that God loves everybody. And because of that, there cannot be a place of eternal punishment for our sins. And they will quote the scripture, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The love of God is an attribute of God. Unlike all attributes, such as hatred, hatred of sin, unrighteousness. The attributes of God are eternal in their nature. God hates, God loves, creates and determines all things to demonstrate those divine perfections. The scriptures are very clear that God punishes sin. God is angry with the wicked every day. That God takes vengeance on people, pours out divine wrath on nations and individuals. And it is written, it is appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. So it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Now if what I've said is a reasonable way of viewing God, I wish you to consider if those people who have already died, and there are millions of billions, if they do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, are they suffering the vengeance of God now against their sins and experiencing the effects of eternal punishment? Also, are those believers in Christ now experiencing the blessings of eternal life in the presence of God, now dwelling with each other with a felt sense of the love of God towards them and towards each other? Do we now face a heaven or a hell in our future? When we die, will we answer to God for our sins and for our behaviour? Will we personally be held up as a trophy of God's love and grace and mercy or as one not loved by God, as an example of one suffering eternal vengeance and punishment for our sins, as an object of God's hatred. In light of what I've said, is it unreasonable for me to suggest that one, God does not love everybody the same way as to give them eternal life. Two, God loves some of all mankind, loving them with an eternal love and has and does give eternal life to them in Jesus Christ, and Jesus calls them the elect. Three, the gift of eternal life is a gift as opposed to eternal death is because such people have been forgiven all their sins and are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Four, that those of mankind who experience forgiveness of sins and know the mercy of God do so as a result of God's love. The eternal Son of God died for their sins and made full atonement for their sins. 5. Those who experience such love do so because God the Father loved them with an eternal love from before the world began. 6. That the rest of mankind who do not know God or believe in Jesus Christ answer to God for their own sins and experience the wrath of God against their sins for all eternity, that this is hell. Now the scripture that speaks of God loving and hating some is clear in the case of Jacob and Esau where it says, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated, that the purpose of God according to election, that is divine choice, might stand. For this was written before the twins Jacob and Esau were born. So this choice of loving Jacob and hating Esau was not based upon their good or bad deeds then it might be clear that God's choice of some to salvation is based upon God setting his love upon some and not on others and not based upon whether we deserve the mercy of God, his salvation or any of these eternal blessings. It is my opinion when rightly presenting this matter to people it will promote the fear of God in a person and if they are concerned about their standing before God it can be pointed out that they may call out to God in prayer, asking the Lord Jesus Christ to save them and confirm his love to them. I believe it is wrong to tell all people and say, smile, God loves you. Or employ a pretty girl to say, smile, God loves you, in order to make the truth of God more palatable. 
reason shows and demonstrates that God loves and hates according to his eternal attribute. God does not love one minute and hate the next minute. It is unreasonable to think that God loves those that are perishing in hell now forever and all eternity.